it's chocolate soy milk or you can get chocolate almond milk or you can get chocolate oat milk they're all very very high in protein of course nuts have the highest protein there is and by the way Pat Nichols you were going to buy a whole bunch of nuts and grind them all up for Glennie and so that she can still get the nutrition of nuts because she doesn't have any, enough teeth anymore what did the dentist what did the uh, judge say to the dentist what did the judge say to the dentist Do you swear to pull a tooth, a whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth? And the judge, no, the dentist who married an, uh, a snake charmer, and their towels, no. An undertaker married a snake charmer, and their towels were marked, hiss and hearse. The time is 9.45 a.m. 8.45. Doesn't Wendy have an appointment at 9 o'clock? Anyway, 10 people are so working here, nobody has set the uh, clocks back yet. November 1st to November 5th, we've been in daylight, uh, done with daylight saving time. We live in the spirit, we walk in the spirit. We keep our thoughts filled with good things, God things, beautiful things, love, and we don't think of ourselves, and we don't think of things that are ugly. That's today, November 5, 2020, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. How was your day yesterday, folks? It's the counting of the uh, votes. Uh, Trump versus Biden. And Biden is leading. And more people would pay attention to the Electoral College if the Electoral College had a football team. And remember Samuel Tilden from uh, West Lebanon, New York, Columbia County. He won the popular vote, but he lost the Electoral College. No, excuse me. Yeah, he... Yes, and so he lost the Electoral College, and so he didn't make president. So it always perplexes me who elects the president. Is it the Electoral College or is it the voters? Or is it the people? Did you see the exciting day yesterday? Uh, there is a pension available for Glendora because Franklin Fuller Buell, her husband, her connubial bliss, her conjugal joy for 48 years, was in World War II. From the very worst of it, the be just before Pearl Harbor, all the way through Victory in Europe Day. Five years. And Glendora is entitled, maybe, to a widow's benefit or survivor's benefit. Wow. The survivors got a whole lot more benefit than the others who didn't survive. And Michael... Dumond went to the museum, and you, I think, have a video of that. And he did not find Franklin's honorable discharge. We thought it was in his wallet. 
let's look again. And then he went over to Franklin's keepsakes and found mass destruction by the little mice. Urine and feces and papers chewed up. So bad that he didn't want to handle it. But somehow or other he bought the box home in another box. Home being the Happy House 3. And we will meet that challenge sometime. Uh, Glendora is perturbed that the mice got in before she got the mothballs in. She asked her people three or four times to distribute mothballs. And Michael says it is very strong of mothball feelings. But Michael saw three mice exit the museum uh, by the back door, by the bow. This is disturbing. Michael says he has a way of giving the mice cardboard boxes that protect them from the winter. And I know that to be true because when the museum was in Ghent, uh, I cleaned up boxes and there when I separated the boxes between the flaps, yes indeed, there were mice who had spent the winter. Do you use rat poison? No, Michael. No. No such thing. And if worse comes to worse, I'm going to have to leave the mice in there and they will finish their destruction and destroy the museum. But I can't see turning the mice out into the winter. And no matter what I do, they will go in. Will you plug the holes? I don't think so. So folks, Give Glendora your meditation on that. How do you treat others? And then Michael went to the computer and he read what the veterans' benefits were. And he found indeed only that that one survivor's benefit applied here. Then he found the form that you make out to apply for that and it's a short form and he read it through. Then he started to make a copy of it but the wonderful fascinating Epson would not perform. It is very temperamental. Maybe not. It's just that we're bad operators. So he wasted a lot of time uh, trying to find the password connection. And then I said it should be 078 train or something like that. Night train. Light train. All that time was wasted. So here's what he decided to do. He would copy it up by his house where he lives. There's a copying place at the corner. Fifteen cents. And then he would ask his friend at the Veterans Administration to make it out. Over the phone. And then we could mail it in because they're not taking any personal application until January 15th because of the virus. Helping others, you'll enjoy it. Happiness is guaranteed. So what was next after that? Putting together the pieces of the vacuum. This is a Bissell vacuum cleaner. It is quite sophisticated and a l much dirt gets into the inside of the machine and it cannot be tolerated to be put away that. So Michael washed all of the parts last Friday and then to di they let them dry Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and then he put the vacuum cleaner back. Then he went over to affix the lampshade to the floor lamp in the sanctuary 
but somebody had taken the floor lamp. A uh, shade. It, who did that? Where did you put the floor lamp shade? Now who did that? So, sorry Michael. And then we went to drawer three. And assiduously went through all the piles of DVDs and cleaned it up. And now there are only the uh, Our Father. Those are the wonderful fillers that we can use for a program if we don't have enough footage for a particular day. So two piles of Our Father, which include some very precious archives, like the jokes at the North Chatham Methodist Church. Uh, we have a pile of archives for December 2020 and January 2021. And then we have a pile of discs that are left over that can be sent to TV stations now for January and February, uh, for December, January without making new ones. But we have so much footage and there's so much to tell that we really don't have room for those. So you use them for Kinderhook. Okay, use them for Kinderhook. Then we're, there are about 20 discs that wouldn't play and that wouldn't record. And Sandy or Wendy gives those to a friend of hers. I believe she's the director of the library at Hudson Valley Community College, who is also a lawyer. And so Cindy, Wendy has those ready to take to her. What next? Wendy called and said that Darlene had to go see her son and would somebody please warm up this dish of food for Glendora? And Michael said he would and so Wendy was glad of that. It was chickpeas and rice and other vegetables with a flavoring and it was an East Indian dish. Uh, I think my people who are bringing me Meals on Wheels are leaning too heavily on Spanish food and East Indian food. Let's go with USA food, New England, Northeast food. Glendora hasn't had french fries for a long time. I suppose that's good. But once in a while. Then what? Michael fed the birds. Fed them bird seed and cookies out the window. Michael fed the birds cookies and bird seed behind the garage and he saw a, a doe with a yearling. Doe is a female deer, Ray is a something something son, me is the name I call myself, far is a long long way to go, do re mi fa. So, what was next? Time. Time. Time ran out. The time is 8.24 a.m. November 6. Friday. Anno Domini 2020. I think Michael left. He will be here. And he left at 8 o'clock. And Glendora forsook the vegan commercial on the 6.30 p.m. news. Weighted down with so many things to do. Oh, that is a shame. Oh, no. The last job was... 
the micro cassettes. Michael got them all to work. Glendora mixes them all up. The minute she turns them on, they stop and jam. Michael says, trying to push the cassette deeply into the cassette player might correct that. So we have five of them. One for meditation, two for the in calls and the log, three for words, and four for jokes. Is there another one? Maybe. So Glendora gave him forty dollars and that will be out of uh, $250 for Thursday, Friday, Saturday afternoons. The uh, meeting with the owners about the ultimatum uh, have somebody here with Glendor for safety reasons. That was canceled, so that threw Glendora off and made her think that Michael was late when he was right. Beg your pardon. Now, when all is said and done, the only thing that really matters is what? How did you treat others? Others are animals. How did you treat animals? Go vegan. No animal products. Live harmlessly. Leave the animals alone. Selfless. No selfishness. No me first. No egotism. Stop showing off. Stop trying to be separate from God. You never will be. You never will be. There's no such thing. First of all, it doesn't exist. Even if you got out there, you wouldn't find anything because it doesn't last. It's dead. It's, it never was created. Why? Because God created everything. Why? Because God, what God created is good. So give up that. Trying to be better than somebody else. Give it up. Remember your stewardship. You're here to care and keep the universe going and growing and glowing. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about some of the beautiful concepts of Christian science. So let me review these and see if I can bring it off. Somebody asked a dog, are you bilingual? What did the dog say? Woof! Meow! Again, people would know more about the Electoral College if the Electoral College had a football team. Again, the senator won in the outlying districts because during the campaign he was outlying in all of them. Again, vote early and vote often. Again, under the Republicans, you cannot earn your keep. Under the Democrats, you cannot keep what you earn.
I can't find it. Uh, I, I find it very difficult. It's a wonderful creation, the Olympus digital recorder of 1500 hours audio. But I guess because of the eyesight limitation, I really can't operate it because I don't know where anything is. I don't know where the pieces are that were audio tapes for you where they are. All right, smarty pants, why do you believe Christian science is an answer? Well, uh, it understands what God is. It understands that God is love, God is spirit, God is truth, God is light, God is divine principle. It understands that God is everything, and it understands that God is good. So therefore everything is good. So you keep your mind on what is good. The rest of it, anything bad, you just don't bother to think about it. You can choose what you want to think about it, but don't give it any existence. And in doing that, people get healed. And Christian Science has a huge volume, a library, of testimonials of people who have been healed by practicing Christian Science. The textbook is Christian Science with Keys to the Scripture by Mary Baker Eddy. I think it was... The dis she made the discovery in 1866, but before she would publish anything, she had to prove that it was so, and then hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these testimonials, grand testimonials, how I love to see people heal, came forth. And she published the foot. Now, did she publish with key to the scriptures? That one, did she publish that in 1891? And the first one was published in the 1880s sometime? Well, I would, I do commend it to you. I commend you go read it. You can read it on the internet, you can read it at Christian Science reading rooms after the virus is over. Uh, you can read it on compact disc or listen to it on compact disc. And you can read the book. And it is a matter of record that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have been healed just by reading the book. And then others have been healed by Christian science practitioners who make house calls or talk to people on the phone or whatever and heal them along the pattern of a doctor healing a patient. Glenny, remember, Glenny is 92 and a half now. No doctors, no medicine. So basically, she's a very good Christian scientist. 
no doctors, no medicine at 92 and a half years old. Where do you study Christian Science Glendora? Well, every morning in, at 6 o'clock, listening to the... Now I'm listening to the Christian Science uh, prayers for December. And they play the piano and they sing a hymn. And then I spend about a half an hour with Wayne reading 10 pages from Science and Health. We're up to page 400 now, Christian Science Practice, Chapter 11, I think it is. And I think I'm almost through that, because I've read uh, the teaching. No, I may not read the teaching, because I'm not a Christian Science teacher. The teachers are above the practitioners, I think. And then there's Genesis. That I've listened to. Apocalypse, I've listened to that. A Revelation, I've listened to that. And Reconciliation is superb. That's a grand piece. I listened to that about six times. Over and over and over again, phrase by phrase. And then there's three compact discs of healings. And those are a joy to listen to. Very inspiring. So I guess I'd spend a couple hours a day on it. Ever since when? August, September, October? This is November. But I can't find the phrases that I thought were so help would be so helpful to you on account of I can't read this Olympus digital recorder. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit of love. Keep telling ourselves that. Keep telling ourselves that. Walk in the spirit of love. And then everything is solved and beautiful and sweet. And you're happy. And that could be true all over the world. <laughs>